What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to part two of this technical analysis masterclass. Hopefully you learned a ton in the first video and please remember to take your time with it and go slow and repeat sections if you have to. But the way that you're going to learn the most is by just having real world experience. So trading, you don't have to trade with real money. You can trade with paper money. You can just study charts. You can go left and look what's happened in the past. And that'll give you a good idea of what price action looks like for certain commodities. So there's a lot of nuance in the field of charting. And one of them is that each commodity, each asset, each cryptocurrency, each Forex pair, each stock, it has its own personality. Now, it has to build up a lot of data for it to establish itself as a certain personality type, if you will. So you can't really say like a coin that launched three days ago, you know, has a personality yet. But a coin like Ponky, which launched December 23rd, wow, it feels like yesterday, December 23rd, 2023, this is a lot of data to work with. And I feel like I know how Ponky moves, okay? Now, Microsoft has its own way of moving. Um, PayPay has its own way of moving. Litecoin has its own way of mov moving. Bitcoin has its own way of moving for sure. And just after spending time with these charts, you'll start to understand you know, is this a, an incredibly volatile stock? Does this stock print this pattern over this pattern? And when this pattern shows up, how likely is it to succeed? So you'll start to learn that each stock, each commodity, each asset has its own personality in terms of price action. All right, so let's get right into it. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Please do not make investments based on what I say in these videos all right and as always this video is presented to you by bing x they're an amazing partner of mine i've been partnered with them for three years actually good guys over there so if you want to trade spot or leverage click my link below and you will get some sort of monetary reward for signing up and making a small deposit to trade with all right so check this out man one of the things that i forgot to mention in the first video is that to establish a support or resistance level of any type, you need three touches on the price action, okay? So I'll break this down so it's easier to understand and so that you can see. All right, now we'll be talking about levels in this video because that's like one of the main things. If you can recognize levels, man, that's, yeah, I'd say that's second in line after candlestick patterns. So in, in my eyes, it goes candlestick patterns, then uh, levels, then like, you know, indicators and external factors like breaking news and just being aware of, of those sorts of things. Um, but we're gonna go with levels, all right? So right off the bat, and it's gonna jump out at you, okay? So check this out. You have a level right here, and I'm doing this all live. So this was not prepared, but honestly, you're going to get your best TA when you're doing it on the spot because you shouldn't be overthinking, you know, like, where is this level? Like, what pattern is it showing? If there's a pattern, it's going to jump out at you, okay? If there's a level, it's going to jump out at you. You don't have to think about it. So these are the horizontal levels, just support and resistance. I'm sure I've marked this chart up a ton in the last, man, how many months is that? Uh, eight or nine months? Cool. So again, I'm just establishing the support and resistance levels on the chart. Oh, that's a key one right there. Multiple touches, okay, cool. So I'll go off of candlesticks to make the levels, but I'll also, oh, this is a level right where it's at currently. I'll also, see this one's not jumping out, so that's why I'm hesitant to drop it, but 34. 
I'll also go off of the volume profile visible range to set levels. And then sometimes I'll just use round numbers like psychological um, numbers like 40, 50, 60. That makes a lot of sense sometimes. And we'll talk about that too in a few moments. So this is an indicator VPVR volume profile visible range. It's one of my favorites with meme coins. I honestly chart naked most of the time and because that just works for me. So if you're a guy that likes to have 20 indicators on the screen, hey, go for it. But I like to keep it really, really simple. Levels, patterns, volume, and then the VPVR every once in a while. So this shows you where the transactional volume has occurred in the past. Right off the bat, you can see the bulk of it has happened between 20 cents and three cents, okay? That should go, yeah, we'll do yellow. So this is where the bulk of the transactions have occurred. The buys and sells, they have occurred between three cents and 20 cents, all right? And then as you go higher, there's another zone, all right? Between 48 and 35, okay? So that's like zone one zone two all right so off of these volume shelves on the right hand side you can make levels and it tends to work out pretty well so just looking at this i'd say once ponky crosses 44 and a half cents that's a key level so that's a key level of resistance once it crosses 44 and a half on coinciding volume down here, breaks through, um, turns old resistance into new support and continues upward, that would be a good confirmation that the uptrend is resuming, all right? And remember, an uptrend is just this. Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. That's all that it is, okay? That's an uptrend. And the opposite is a downtrend. Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Now, why is that important? Because if you can recognize what trend is currently in play, you'll know whether to buy, whether to hold, or whether to sell. You'll know that if it's an uptrend and then it makes a double top, so it's doing this, and then it fails to make a higher high above this one, you'll watch this neckline for it to possibly break, uh, flip old support and a new resistance, and then the downtrend will resume. Okay, so it's ebbs and flows, man, just like life. Trading is a microcosm for life. It's one of the main reasons I love it. So ebbs and flows, uptrend, consolidation, downtrend, that's all it is. You're either in accumulation or distribution, um, uptrend, downtrend, consolidation. There's really only a few phases that it's in. Now, if you look at, this brings me to another thing. If you look at a smaller time frame, so let's say like the four hour, we'll take the VPVR off, it's a little distracting. So let's say we look at the four hour, this is in a downtrend, okay? So lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, all right? So I'd watch for this lower low. I don't want this to be broken. I don't want price to go below 20 cents because that would confirm that the downtrend is still in play. All right, so I want it to at least hold above this. This is a lower low. I want it to at least hold above the lower low at 20 cents. So depending on the time frame that you're looking at, if you're looking at a smaller time frame and if you're zoomed in, um, like on the four hour, yeah, that's a downtrend. But if you zoom out, that's an uptrend, gigantic uptrend. Okay, so you have um, you have higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, way up there, higher low, higher high, and the higher low is basically at the same level, but that was a macro event with the whole market going down. So that's a false breakout. 
and I would really put the, the higher low a little bit higher than that. So this one's still playing out. I'm not gonna mark it quite yet, but those are higher highs and higher lows, and a series of that is an uptrend, all right? So back to levels, and why did I draw these levels here? Let me get one more. Cool. All right. So this first level that I drew at seven and a half cents. Yeah, I remember that. Okay, that makes sense. That's because that was the day one all time high. All right. So you have one touch point. Remember, you need three touch points of price action for it to be an established support resistance level. So you can't just draw lines anywhere. You have to draw it where price touches once, twice, three times. No matter if it's a completely flat horizontal line or if it's a diagonal support and resistance level. So price touched once, uh, wicked up twice. acted as resistance multiple times in this area right here. And then it springboarded off of it as support. So that's one, two, three, couple right there, but one, two, three, four, five touches. So we know that's a key level of resistance. All right, now why did I draw this one? I draw this one right here at 10 cents. Well, it's a round number. I didn't do it because it's a round number. It just works out like that, but round numbers like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, you're pretty much, you're regularly going to see resistance and support in those levels because traders are psychological. And when they see numbers like that, um, <clears throat> like Ponky going to a dollar or 50 cents, or even when it hit like 10 cents for the first time, it got rejected like crazy back here. Cause that's just a round number. It's easy on the eyes and so it, it's a it's an important level. It's more important than like 10.235 cents or like eight and a half cents. That really isn't that much of a prominent level. OK, so uh, this second level of support, I did it because you saw the bounce right here. This resistance got flipped into new support and it pushed up. So right here, these candles and then it wicked down. So twice. So one touch, two touches on that wick. And then over here, you saw as price was going, price was going down in this downtrend, came up, got rejected from this level and kept pushing down. So it established itself as a key level of resistance right there. All right, so third level is at 12 cents. I did that because right here, these two candles, they got topped out. Bam, got rejected and then Price actually broke through, so it got rejected on April 15th. Price came back down and then pushed through, wicked down 12 cents, same level, so two touches to push up. It got like a trampoline effect. Came up, came back down, touch, and then blasted off from there. All right, two touches, and then a third touch on this wick with that candle right there. Let me show you. Wicked, wicked. The bottom of these candles it touched and then price broke above that level. Cool, so fourth level is 15 and a half cents. Obviously price got stopped out right here, uh, March 15th. But that's not exactly why I drew that level. I drew that level because wicked up and got rejected, um, came down and found support, first of all, right here, and then wicked up, got rejected, kept pushing down in the downtrend. See a lot of consolidation in this level. Broke up above this level, came back down, bounced off of it. Look at these two candles on May 12th and May 13th. So one, two, three touches. And then after that happened, uh, price broke out really nicely. Really good stuff. 
So this level right here is really interesting. You see price wick all the way down from 45 cents to 29 cents. This is 0.2915. Price wicked right there, held as support. Again, price came down like two weeks later and found support at this level. Support held, a few wicks below, but just a false breakout. So two touches. And then again, look where the price action closed on August 5th's candle. Same level, 29 cents. All right, so I didn't even break down the anatomy of a candlestick. We'll do that right now. So a green candle is bullish. That means that the close is above the open. So this is a daily. Each candlestick represents 24 hours of price action. So the open on a green candle is below the close. On a red candle, the close is below the open. All right. So for instance, this candle right here, it opened at 40 cents. It closed at 43 cents. Now the wick to the top is the high during that 24 hours of trading. So it wicked to 44 cents, uh, closed at 43.6 cents. All right, uh, no wick to the bottom. But a candle like this, this one opened at 39.17, closed at 39.87. It had a high of 41.17 and a low of 37.47, okay? The wicks are the highs and the lows, and the candle bar is the open and the close. If it's a red candle, a bearish candle, like this is a bearish engulfing right here, um, it opened, the open is at the top, close is at the bottom, so it opened at 47.4, closed at uh, 42.46. And then the low of the session was 41.53. High of the session is 48.03 for this candle, okay? So on a green candle, the open is below the close, and that's the bar section. And then the wicks at the top and the bottom are the highs and lows for that time frame. So these are daily candles. So each candlestick represents 24 hours of price action. So the wick is saying, in those 24 hours, what was the high and what was the low? So that's how you read a candlestick. All right, so I'm gonna take these levels off and I wanna show you some patterns. All right. So I see a lot of people on crypto Twitter and they mark up charts and it's just not correct. So I'd like to help people out. <laughs> All right. So this is just a bull flag. So right here's the flagpole. Bam, like that. And then you have top side resistance and then you have bottom side support all right so bull flag bull pennant this one's more of a bull pennant um one two three touches and then the breakout point Look at this wick is landing right on the top side of that um, flipped, res flipped resistance new support level right there. Had a false breakout right here. I actually remember this. False breakout below the, um, the pennant. But we have one touch, two touch, three touch. One, two, three, four. So what you're watching for is price to coil in this section. It's just going to coil up, all right? When you see price coiling up after a nice leg like this is formed, so you have a flagpole and then price is just sidewinding like a snake. It's getting ready typically for the next leg up, and that's exactly what this one did. So 
bull pennant, breakout right here. Remember how I always say you need to have volume, coinciding volume on the breakout? Look what happened. Volume ramped up while price broke out of this level right here. So it broke out, uh, moved from 45 cents to 70 cents in the matter of just a couple days. So that's a really nice breakout. Really, really nice breakout. Unfortunately, it didn't hold, topped out at 71 cents because uh, the macro market was selling off. All right, but that's a bull pennant. Nice move from 45 to 70 cents. Really, really big move. Now, let me show you some other patterns. So this candlestick right here, that's a bearish engulfing. So this candle right here is a bearish engulfing. Cool. So this is where the red candle, after an uptrend, the red candle swallows the previous green one completely swallows it, right? From 16 to 12 cents in one candle, open to close. After that red candle swallows the previous green one, you're gonna see a downtrend, and that's exactly what happened, okay? Now this is the opposite. Beautiful. Poetry in motion. I love charting, man. So you have this bearish engulfing, the trend reverses in the interim. So you have this downtrend right here. Look, downtrend. And then this candle right here, big ass green candle that swallows the previous red one, right? From six cents all the way to 8.6 cents. Huge bullish engulfing after a downtrend that's going to reverse. And look what price did. It went from six cents all the way to 21 cents bullish engulfing right here bearish engulfing right there beautiful so this is not the best example let me see okay cool man i remember watching this for weeks <laughs> So this is a, a double bottom on the daily, a really big one. So price sold off. Bam, neckline, bam, breaks through the neckline, continues up. All right. Neckline at 50 cents. Perfect. Round number, psychological. Remember, you have the first bottom right here at 21. Second bottom right here at, let's see, is that 21? Uh, more like 23 the wicks. Yeah, it wicked down to like 20 but 23 where the major support was and then on this one 26 it's never exactly on the dot levels are always a range Okay But that's definitely close enough really nice double bottom price came down once neckline twice broke through the neckline and went up Nice double bottom. Let me break it down on the hourly. I think there was some really clean price action early on with Ponky. Oh yeah, right here. All right, so this is on the hourly. Each candlestick represents 60 minutes of price action. This is pretty beautiful. So you got this uh, flagpole.
So this is a bull pennant again. So as we talked about in the first few minutes of this video, assets have their own personality. So if I see Ponky printing a bull pennant over and over again, well, it's something I might expect in the future. Okay, so one touch, two touch, uh, three touches acted as heavy resistance right there until it broke out of that. Look at that, on coinciding volume. Bam. One touch, two touch, three touch, four touch. More than enough to establish itself as support to the bottom. Nice bull pennant with a breakout and it ran from 48 to uh, 0 0.048 to 11 cents. So nice 120% move right there. This was a zone that Ponky was in where big money was accumulating for two weeks straight. So that's just a zone, it was ping-ponging around, and then you see the volume increase. Lost it for a second, and we're right back at it. So it was just ping-ponging around in that zone. Then you see volume increase as it breaks out of this zone. So we have resistance to the top, support to the bottom. Price broke out, came back, so flipped old resistance for new support. Look at that retest. This is where you would enter on the retest. If you were long in it or you wanted to find an entry, you enter on the retest. All right, You don't enter on the breakout because it's not confirmed yet until it retests and it bounces. So you would enter right here at 20 cents. But that was a really nice breakout of this zone right here, um, this channel that it was in for a bit. And again, TA is not gonna play out perfectly all the time because charts or price action is dictated by one of three things, technicals, fundamentals, and breaking news. All right, so when it broke out of this pennant, it broke out and then sold off heavy. That was because the money markets were going down all around the globe. That wasn't just Ponky. So that was what I would call a breaking news event that brought down a lot of assets. And that's not something that you can account for with technical analysis. But by doing technical analysis, you're going to be shown what happened in the macro, okay? So TA is just a graphical representation of the market. TA is a graphical representation of how buyers and sellers feel towards a certain commodity, all right? Um, this is a morning doji right here. This candle followed by the green one. Let me show you. This doji candle right here looks like a cross followed by a bullish candle. Green one. Um, downtrend, you have this cross, very skinny bar, long wick at the bottom bullish candle right here. It's a little bit weak, to be honest, this green one. I'd like to see it more full. But in any case, you have the doji followed by the bullish candle. That's a morning doji star. And it moved from 20 cents to 41 cents. 
So moving forward, levels I'd be looking at are this one, 29 cents. And 41.4, all right? So until something breaks out one way or the other, I'm not making my mind up on this token quite yet. So that's what Ponky is looking like. Hopefully you guys are learning a ton. <laughs> and I hope you're having fun as well, man. If you're looking for a new exchange to trade with, check out Bing X on my link below. And I look forward to teaching you guys more about price action. I love you so much. I'll see you for the next video. Peace.